Hey, it's Jeff. It's uh, Friday morning, the, what, the 19th of, uh, of August, 2010. Uh, the girls are here. The girls are, there they go. I think you can probably see that. Hey, girls. And I'm just uh, watching them for the day, and I was thinking about uh, listening to the talk show podcast uh, with um, John Gruber and John Benjamin, and they're talking about the upcoming Apple TV and having, a, um, I think, a pretty good, intelligent discussion about... Um, the different factors that are inherent in the Apple uh, Apple strategy in the future, you know, including the cloud, including um, iOS, including um, Apple TV, and you know how these might all tie together. And um, the one thought that I hadn't heard, uh, that I didn't hear in this discussion, that I think is, um, frankly, most likely to happen, is to not think about the Apple's conception of the Apple TV as being an operating system or a device that functions with a user interface, the way an iPhone is or the way you know a laptop is. Um, I think that it's important to uh, take in, keep in mind Steve Jobs' comment from the de-conference video where he said that he thought the biggest fundamental problem with the industry for set-top boxes was the go-to-market strategy. And I thought... Um, just to hear him use the phrase go to market was fascinating, but also um, because it's very, it's getting into the wilds, you know, the details of, um, of, of marketing, which he, he doesn't usually go out and, and talk using marketing speak about how he does things. You know, he's far more intuitive and artistic about it usually, and he doesn't even talk about it. But I was, so I, I paid attention to that when he, he used, you know, he said that uh, the go to market strategy was wrong. And then um, what that also made me think was that what we're going to see is really going to be fundamentally different than a typical set-top box. Uh, so to me, getting back to what I was saying earlier, let's not think about devices the way we've been thinking about devices um, and think about the TV as just the largest of the devices. Instead, let's think about screens and content. And basically, what is a TV? I mean, here's my TV. Uh, you know, I have a 46-inch um, uh, you know, Philips screen that uh, when I bought it about two years ago was, it blew me away. I was so excited. I watched HD cable on it. It was phenomenal. Great. You know, it seemed like the pinnacle, bigger, bigger, bigger. Since I got uh, my iPad, I, I really don't even watch it anymore. And since most of my entertainment is coming to me in ways uh, that I'm getting through my iPhone and my iPad, um, there's re really no reason to have to, uh, uh, the, you know, the convenience of having it on the device outweighs what used to be the ultimate measure of success in a viewing experience, which used to just be the largest screen. That's no, that's no longer the, the, the prime um, factor, at least for a lot of the types of content that I'm watching throughout the day, you know. Um, anyway, uh, screens and content. So a screen this big, what's the purpose of a screen that big? It's really to look at content. Um, I think screen, you know, a, and... Uh, I mean, every screen is really to look at content, but a screen that big is obviously a screen that cannot be interacted on um, itself as the interface, or at least not a screen this size that's designed to replace a television within the context of a home, where the expectation is you sit down on a sofa and you watch content on the screen. So everyone gets that, blah, 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 but I guess the, the idea that I had, the fundamental big idea that I haven't heard discussed is why couldn't we just view the, why, why couldn't the Apple TV basically just be a way to take um, any content that's on an iPhone, an iPod Touch, an iPad, a MacBook, a Windows computer running iTunes, and stream it to that device using the interface of the device that you're currently actively using, which already has a perfect interface for this. You know, you're on the, you're on the iPhone, you're, using, you're sitting on the sofa, you're using the iPhone throughout the day to have all of your content, well then why shouldn't you just be able to take the iPhone, sit down on the sofa, and then hit a couple buttons in your, in your you know, web browser or whatever, and boom, just start streaming that video right to your TV as, a, as an auxiliary screen. Um, and you know, the interface to control it would naturally be right on the iPad. Why would, it, why would there need to be another interface created, is what I'm saying, that's just for the TV? Um, now obviously there are going to be applications and uses that are going to be fundamentally different from uh, content watching experience that we know now. So those types of applications will probably um, lend themselves to new types of input mechanisms. And I think that, you know, as a first way to implement those, it would make, you know, obviously apps make perfect sense. But why would they need to be apps that would run literally on the Apple TV? Why wouldn't they not be iPhone apps or iPod Touch apps 
that are designed to interface with, with the uh, Apple TV. Um, and then that push content to the Apple TV, you know. So that to me, I think, is what Apple's go-to-market strategy is going to be. The idea that their primary goal is to sell as many iPods, iPhones, iPads, um, you know, devices as, as they can. They're already selling them like hotcakes. So I think the purpose of adding another device to their lineup, a.k.a. the Apple TV, is to do whatever they can do to just ex continue to accelerate the pace of adoption of their existing devices. Um, not necessarily to go into a market that's never succeeded before with an expensive product and attempt to redefine that market uh, the way that they did with the phone market. That's a possibility. That would be the alternate strategy. I think that's the expected strategy. Instead, I'm saying no. I think what Apple's going to basically do is find a way to turn, to make it very easy to turn any large TV into a viewing platform for what you've got on your hand and your iPhone or your iPod Touch or your iPad or your Mac or your laptop. Um, so what does the Apple TV really need to be at the end of the day? Well, yeah, make it a small embedded device that runs, uh, you know, a variant of iOS, you know, which is really just saying a variant of the fundamental, you know, Apple operating system they've been using for the past decade, um, which is awesome and extremely portable and, uh, and just living out its fantasy future where it's powering all kinds of different devices. Good job, Apple. Anyway, um, but yeah, small device, and all it really needs to look like is an HDMI cable um, on one end that would plug... Uh, into the TV, and on the other end, uh, something that plugs into the wall for power. And it would just be a Wi-Fi, you know, N base station. And basically, it would just, you know, automatically through Bonjour, connect to any device that's in the vicinity, um, and instantly, you know, like, kind of like a remote, the way it works right now um, with Apple TV, but make that connection even more seamless. And basically, then you just make the interface disappear from the TV and only appear on the device you're holding in your hand. Um, that's what they're going to do, I think, and I think that a device like that um, would also fit the speculation and rumors that are out there about the sizes. Um, you know, the saying about it's going to have a very small amount of memory makes sense. It's only going to be a cache. Um, I think all local storage, essentially, really should be considered now um, as essentially a cache as opposed to primary storage, which is really what the cloud is, you know, migration is all about. So, yeah, it's got, you know, 16, 32, whatever, maybe only four gigabytes of... Of, uh, of, of SSD, you know, or uh, cash um, on there, and, um, and that's it, you know, uh, it's simple. W one thing plugs in, plugs into the wall for power, auto configure on the, on the Wi-Fi N um, thing, and you're in. And I think maybe not even 99 bucks, maybe they'll uh, give it away for 49 bucks. Because again, it's not about making this device the end, uh, the, the be-all, end-all of, uh, you know, the product. This device is just an enabler for the Apple uh, ecosystem that exists everywhere else. Anyway, uh, that's what I think, and uh, talk to you later.